Welcome back. So over the last number of weeks, we've been talking about listening for God's voice. We poured a lot of time and energy in discerning God's voice. This week, we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about finding balance and how we listen to God's voice. A number of years ago, when I was living in Niagara, one of my good friends owned and operated a local Christian bookstore. And one afternoon, I popped in there to say, hey, how's it going? And he looked a little bit off, a little bit flustered, and I asked him, something seems up. What's going on? He said, well, there's this guy in here who just had a pretty big stack of books, and uh, probably about 150 bucks worth of books. And out of the blue, he puts them down on the counter and says, God told me not to buy these, and just turns and walks out of the store. I thought that was kind of odd, because I thought God was saying to me, you're going to have an increase in sales this month. Now I tell this story because we can easily start to ask God to speak to us on every tiny detail of our lives from, uh, you know, should I eat chicken or meatballs? What shirt should I put on? Should I put on a plaid shirt or a solid striped shirt? And Jesus speaks pretty clearly about this in Matthew chapter 6. Don't worry about these things. Look at the flowers of the field or, or the birds of the air. They don't work and the Lord cares for them and all that they need. And, and I think in that parable, even though Jesus is talking about not being anxious, there's also a clear invitation for us just to be careful and weigh out appropriately what sort of things we should be asking God's guidance for. Naturally, it's good to seek God's guidance and wisdom on what we should be doing with our lives, how our character should be formed, the ways that we should be ambassadors for his kingdom in this world. All of these things are good and right things that we should be asking God's guidance for. And really at all of this, it's a matter about finding balance because we as human beings are weak. We're prone to hearing things wrong from God, and it's about trying to be able to connect ourselves and our weakness and our brokenness to our Father in heaven. And because human beings are weak and frail, and we're prone to misunderstand and misinterpret God's word, listening for God's guidance should never be separated from God's word. Listening for God's guidance should never replace Bible study. 1 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17 clearly say, All scripture is God-breathed and it's suitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting in all righteousness. And so we can see that there is a call for us to be deeply anchored and constantly studying God's word to find out what his guidance is. So take for example something that many people uh, have, have sought God's wisdom on, parenting. Does scripture talk about that? Absolutely. Scripture talks about parents, don't exasperate your children. Parents, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is older, he will not depart from it. And parents, don't neglect discipline. And, and the scriptures are filled with other great principles on what it looks like to parent your children. Now, as you're following those principles, you might want to find more specific guidance on a troubling or difficult issue for your parenting, but really a lot of it's already laid out in general principles in scripture. In Judges chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Manoah prayed to the Lord, I beg you, let the man of God you sent to us come again and teach us how to bring up this boy who was born. So I hope you can hear in that, that balance between specifically seeking God's will and also generally finding God's will anchored in God's word. And so why am I talking about these things? Really, it's quite simple. The person who ceases to remain anchored in God's word leaves himself open to for deception. So I just invite you to take a few moments to write down one or two things that I said today that stood out to you. I invite you also to download the notes below because there's some really good practical questions in there that I'm about to lay out for you. So to put this into practice, I invite you to consider an issue that you're working with. Maybe it's uh, something that's financial, maybe it's parenting, maybe it's marriage. The list could go on about different possible situations that you're working through right now. And I invite you then to use a tool, something like BibleGateway.com or Bible Hub. There's, there's great online resources in which you can punch in one of those key words and start searching the scriptures to see what the scripture says specifically about those issues. Write down what the Bible says and continue to search, cross-referencing where those Bible resources bring you to other relevant scripture texts. And read about 12 of those passages so you can get a broad view of what God is saying there. And invite the Holy Spirit to speak to you personally what can you learn from those 12 passages altogether. Finally, I invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 to 13. There's a reason why every lesson has an additional scripture reading in it. It's to make sure that we remain anchored in the word. Spend some time with that, prayerfully discerning, is God saying something to you? And if he's not, allow that to be part of the foundation of your life. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow.